Hey folks, this is Kalani. The patch 8.2 public test realm has been chugging along quite nicely. So nicely, in fact, that the aforementioned and dreaded server wipe just happened. So if you log onto the PTR and you're a little confused because all of your characters disappeared, don't fret, that was intentional. That means the dev team has gotten all the information they need about the essences for the time being, and want to see how things go when the vendors and shortcuts and all that good stuff are removed so the patch works naturally, as it would when this goes live for real. So a few things have been updated. All of the quest progression makes a bit more sense and most of the patch seems to be there. I actually think we might see a sooner release date for patch 8.2 than the anticipated July release because of how much is actually there. It seems like the whole patch is on the PTR right now, bar a few things like raid testing, but we'll have to see how things go from here. One major update for the PTR this week was the encounter journal for the Eternal Palace raid. I think pretty much everything is in there now, including the loot, so that's what we're going to have a look at in this video. I've always said the most interesting pieces of loot are always the trinkets, because let's be honest, that's kind of the entire point of trinkets. Give me some cool effects that match the raid that we're in or the dungeon that we're in, that increase my throughput and potential, and I'll be a happy camper. I'm pretty easy to please. We have a total of 15 trinkets to look at, so we better get started. Let's start with the DPS trinkets, they're usually the most fun ones. Here we have the Arcing Razor Coral. This one is a little bit weird, because either it does something really simple, or it's missing a bit of how this coral affects the target. But anyway, this is an agility or strength trinket with an on-use effect of stabbing your target with a big chunk of coral, dealing a bit of damage. Any attacks you use against the target have a chance to deal the damage again and apply a charge to the coral. Does that just keep this thing rolling? Does the charge affect how much damage you deal to the target? There are so many questions for this one, but if you can ramp up this bonus damage over time, that could end up being pretty awesome, if you can keep your attacks rolling on the same target. And this trinket only has a 20 second cooldown right now. If you maintain some charges and then use the trinket again, does that let you snowball things even further? I can't wait to test this one out because it could either be super amazing or just kind of weird. Up next we have the Dribbling Ink Pod. I had a look at this trinket a little early on and I think this could be absolutely insane. It's an agility or strength trinket once again with an equip effect of your damaging abilities against targets above 30% health have a very high chance to apply conductive ink. When an enemy falls below 30% health, conductive ink inflicts nature damage for every stack on the target. Imagine for a moment every single agility or strength DPS user in your raid has this trinket equipped. A very high chance to apply stacks of conductive ink for 70% of the fight, and then as soon as the boss drops below that 30% mark, all of those stacks go off at the same time. Depending on whether those stacks last until 30%, whether they reset during the fight for whatever reason, if there's a stack limit and so on and so forth, I can already think of plenty of ways this could be capped or forced to not be as overpowered as I think it could be, but if everything does line up and this allows you to nuke a boss's balls off right when they hit 30% health, this trinket could be hilariously broken on any boss with a burn phase towards the end. I really want this trinket to be broken because I think the effect is absolutely brilliant. Here's another agility or strength trinket, the Vial of Frigid Tempest. This one is also a little strange because while it has an on-use effect, it doesn't have a cooldown or even a duration listed. You create a frigid tempest around you dealing about 2k damage per second to nearby enemies. As long as the frigid tempest is only hitting a single target, the frequency at which it will deal damage will increase. Alright, so if this doesn't actually have a duration or a cooldown, you can just keep this chilly AoE blanket on constantly, dealing that extra damage every second to multiple enemies, or dealing that damage faster if you only have a single target. I'm curious to see if this will be a toggle trinket like I expect it is, or it will change to have a cooldown and a duration, but if it's a toggle trinket that's kind of cool. I wonder how the damage output will be when compared to some of the other trinkets, because if this ends up being pretty good, I can see a lot of Mythic Plus chaps wanting this one for sure, but this one is definitely going to come down to a numbers game. 
This is the last agility or strength trinket we have to look at, the Vision of Demise. Reveal your enemy's impending doom, increasing your haste by 500 for 10 seconds. This haste is further increased proportionally by how much health the enemy is missing. That is on a 1 minute cooldown, and while I can see this being very useful for fights where you have an execute phase that you have to burn through as quickly as possible, I can also see this being very useful on any fights with any number of adds as well, providing that the adds die throughout the fight. All you'd have to do is make sure you tag the adds with the trinket effect while they're as low as you dare leave it, and you'll get the max benefits from this trinket throughout the entire fight. That could be incredibly powerful for anyone who loves haste, especially if this haste amount scales really well. I guess that's just a really great trinket all around for anyone who benefits from haste which is like everyone these days, isn't it? I love trinkets with a shorter cooldown too, so this one gets a big tick from me. This next one is one of the only general DPS trinkets in the raid, I think, because it has crit as the passive stat, and then the unuse is related to primary stat, so that would change depending on what class you're playing, so anyone could pick it up. But anyway, it's a crit trinket with an unuse effect that harvests latent energy for up to 5 seconds, increasing your primary stat by nearly 4,000. The duration of the buff is extended for each second you spend harvesting, up to 30 seconds. That's a pretty long buff duration right there, up to 30 seconds, but to get the full 30 seconds you probably have to stand still for the full 5 seconds of channeling. That's not too bad of a deal for open world content where you can go at your own pace, or even for Mythic Plus dungeons where you might be able to find a little bit of downtime either while the tank is pulling, or while the healer is getting mana back, it depends on how quickly you go through the dungeons, but 30 seconds of 4000 primary stat is a hefty buff for pretty much anyone. It might be a bit harder to get that full 5 seconds in the raid itself though, we'll have to see, I'm sure people will figure out the best places to plonk your butt down and AFK for 5 seconds if this trinket ends up being worth it. We're moving on to the intellect trinkets now. The Aquipotent Nautilus unleashes a wave at your target that returns to your location. Enemies struck by the wave suffer frost damage over 6 seconds, and catching the wave will reduce the cooldown by 30 seconds. So maybe that doesn't come straight back to you, or maybe it does, so you have to stay in the same position to catch it. I feel like this is going to be one of those effects where you have to make sure you're targeting the furthest mob away from you, to make sure the wave goes through everyone between you and the furthest this target, and then comes back. Kind of reminds me of Glaive Toss, or Sidewinders from Hunters. It's not that hard to do most of the time, but if you get it wrong, it can seriously gimp your potential damage from these kinds of effects. Catching that wave is also probably going to get a few DPS killed as well, but I do like the kind of trinkets that provide you with an extra little minigame on the side, whether that's dodging purple orbs that silence you, catching a wave to reduce the cooldown, or gathering up green balls to increase your DPS. I think it's a nice little addition which keeps you on your toes. Up next is the Leviathan's Lure, another intellect trinket which gives your damaging abilities a very low chance to summon a Leviathan, inflicting about 22k damage to your targets. Your damage cultivates fluorescent algae, increasing your chance to summon. I wonder why they decided to do the effect this way. The more you damage a target, the higher the chance of the Leviathan showing up to dish out some extra damage. Maybe to stop it being so effective against adds or an AoE, but if an ad stays up long enough, then you should be able to deal enough damage to get that algae growing. It's an interesting one for sure, though it's not like we haven't seen similar trinkets in the past. I don't think we've seen any of them with a baked-in ramp-up effect though. I wonder if that will actually cause the trinket to lose favour and potential, especially especially as we progress through a tier and end up killing bosses faster. The faster we kill a boss, the less damage you get to deal, probably the less leviathans are going to show up to bite on that lure. That's one thing to keep an eye on. And the last intellect DPS trinket we have is the Shiver Venom Relic. Your damaging abilities have a chance to apply Shiver Venom to your target, dealing nature damage over 20 seconds, and that can stack up to 5 times. It also has an on-use effect, Freeze Shiver Venom, dealing frost damage per stack to nearby enemies. The on-use effect has a 1 minute cooldown. That's pretty cool, so not only do you get to deal some extra damage over time from the equip effect and applying stacks of Shiver Venom, but you also have the option to blow up your stacks to deal some on-demand AoE damage. Why do I get the feeling that some of these trinkets might have been designed with Mythic Plus in mind? I can't quite put my finger on it, 
Seriously though, that one could end up being really good for dungeons, especially if you can stack up the venom across multiple enemies using AoE abilities. It just kind of depends how they let this stack, but also having the choice to hold the on-use effect for key moments in ad fights or in dungeons gives this trinket a lot of potential. Imagine having all of your caster DPS stack up 5 venoms on the boss, wait for the group of ads to spawn, get them on top of the boss, and pow, all of those stacks explode at the same time. And then everyone uses an AoE essence for good measure because let's be honest, essences are kind of like trinkets too, and being able to save so many large on-demand damage sources and use them together might end up making some fights incredibly easy, or at least easier than they're meant to be. But let's stay on topic for now trinkets. This next trinket will probably see some overlap from the caster trinket and the healers. This portal key is a haste trinket with an equip that gives your abilities a chance to create a void tear for 30 seconds. Standing near a void tear opens a portal, granting you a good chunk of intellect for 10 seconds. So that sounds kind of like the void tear abilities that we've seen before, some quite recently. I think a pair of legs from the Crucible of Storm's Raid lets you do something similar, except you have to run next to the tear to open the portal for this, and then that's when you'll gain your intellect buff. That might seem like a bit of extra legwork to get the same kind of effect, except you can decide when and if to trigger those portals. So you can save it for a bit, line up your cooldowns and go to town. Or if the void tear isn't safe, you can wait it out. Maybe an AoE is about to go off and you can run over to the tear afterwards. Or maybe you need to stack on the tanks real quick to make sure you help split the damage. Giving you the option of when to use the tear is pretty interesting and also makes this an on-use trinket with a few more restrictions restrictions, kind of. Moving on, we have the healer trinkets. These are obviously all still intellect trinkets, but I doubt your intellect DPS tunes will get much use out of them. The Luminous Jellyweed gives your heals a chance to grant Luminescence to the lowest health ally within 40 yards. Heals on ally with Luminescence heal for 10% more, up to a total of 36k. Not too bad, maybe a little boring, but this trinket makes it easier to top off anyone who might be falling a little too low. It's probably going to be a nice boost for tank heals most of the time, too, as I would expect they're the chaps who would end up with the lowest health for the vast majority of the fight. Everyone else might spike up and down as raid damage comes out, but the tanks are getting trained constantly. We also have Stay of Execution. Defer 1300 healing every 3 seconds, and Moving releases deferred healing, restoring health to your 3 most injured allies. That one is actually super curious. If you think about it, one of the main problems that healers have these days is healing on the move. After you go through the instant cast heals, most healers can't do any significant healing while moving. Shamans are really the only exception if they have Spirit Walker's Grace available, but for everyone else, this trinket could actually be really solid. If you ever need to move, it's free healing for up to three people per healer that has this trinket. If you don't necessarily need to move, but you want to provide some extra heals, you can also also move a little bit in between instant cast spells. The only worry I would have about this trinket is the throughput numbers. 1300 every 3 seconds isn't that much health. So if this trinket can't provide enough throughput while moving then I doubt it will see much use, but the effect has potential to be quite powerful. And then we also have the Zoatroid Egg Sack. A delightful name for a trinket, why are we carrying around a mind-controlling squid's egg sack again? Oh, because it helps us heal, gotcha, gotcha. This one gives your single target heals a chance to summon a zoatroid by your target's side, providing them with an absorption effect and granting them some versatility. Every 10% mana you spend nourishes the zoatroids you have, providing them with an extra 12k to the absorb. I wonder if these Zoatroids persist even after their absorb has gone, because if it does, you could get a lot of value out of this trinket by fishing for Zoatroids with low cost spells, and then when some big damage is coming up you could burn through some mana to heal through the damage, but also to replenish some of those shields. I think this one is going to be really good for anyone who primarily uses single target heals, like Holy Paladins. And then last, but by no means least, we have the Tank Trinkets. Ashvane's Bloodthirsty Coral causes 10% of incoming damage to be stored as healing blood, up to 52,000 total. 
You're healed for 8k every 5 seconds while healing blood is stored. If 10% of all damage is stored as healing blood, then I guess that's the cap you'll always be working with. So you should heal for 10% of all the damage you take during a fight, which is going to be a significant chunk while you're actively tanking. Maybe a good choice for fights with constant damage so you can always benefit from the healing, though I wouldn't be surprised if this got left behind in favour of some other trinkets as you progress further into the raid. The Chain of Suffering has a pretty cool effect. Again, it's not particularly new. A few bosses have linked tanks like this before to make sure they share the damage output, but I think this might be one of the first times where we have the option to create the link. Split 50% of incoming damage with an ally within 15 yards for 25 seconds, up to 450,000 damage. If your target moves out of range or falls below 25% health, the link will be broken. That's on a 2 minute cooldown. On the upside, you won't accidentally kill your off tank. On the downside, you can't purposefully kill your off tank or the pesky demon hunter who always pulls before you in dungeons or raids. I guess if you can take enough damage to one shot them with 50%, that could work, but that's gotta be one heck of a hit. Either way, splitting damage between your tanks could take the edge off for some really nasty attacks. Now this last trinket is a bit of a weird one, and I'm making an assumption here calling it a tank trinket, but hopefully you'll agree with me. It's an agility or strength trinket with an on-use effect to declare an edict. Cannot be used in combat, 30 second cooldown. That doesn't tell us too much, but the equip effect is gain edict of the sentinel, absorbing physical damage that stacks each time the absorb breaks, up to 10 times. Recharges after 16 seconds. I think this is something we just have to play around with, because if your absorb shield starts stacking whenever it breaks, up to 10 times and it starts at 20k, does that mean you absorb 20k, then 40k, then 60k, all the way up to 200k? Surely if that's how it works, you should always have an absorb shield active, unless you take a crazy amount of damage within 16 seconds. That seems bonkers, but being able to declare an edict out of combat is super interesting. Does that mean the equip effect of the trinket actually changes and there's more available than just the one that we see? Or it could be tied to the Queen's Court boss fight where Ajara plays a little game of Simon Says with you. She'll decree certain things and you'll be forced to act dependent on what she decrees. Maybe kind of similar to an edict? Not too sure. So it could play around with a few similar effects, or I could just be grasping at straws. Take your pick. And that's all the trinkets coming in the new Eternal Palace raid for patch 8.2. Remember that the raid does open up a few weeks after the patch goes live, so we won't have to wait for patch 825 for the raid to go live, which I'm super excited about. I'm sure many of you are a little bored of the Battle of Desert lore at this point, and from the list we have so far, it looks like the Eternal Palace trinkets are going to be quite a lot of fun. I think a few of these have the potential to be the new overpowered trinkets for a few specs, especially some of the AoE ones, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Most of it does come down to numbers tuning at the end of the day. Bear in mind that this is all PTR footage, so anything could change between now and when we actually get these trinkets for real. So some might end up being super brokenly OP, or they could just get nerfed into the ground. And that's all for this video. What do you think about the new trinkets coming in the Eternal Palace raid? Do you think designing essences at the same time might have pushed these trinket designs a bit further, or do you think that process might have had a negative effect? With so many people calling essences just another trinket, it must have affected how the dev team decided to tackle actual trinkets for the same patch. Don't you think? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, if you want to see more make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.